Imre University, four centuries old, is a new university. A new hub, a new centre of student life has been created around George Square. And the new library is at the academic centre of that life. The library itself, formerly opened in 1968, stands on the southwest corner of the square with a new university complex stretching north towards the town. Apart from the main library, there are several sectional or faculty libraries. And amongst them, the law library, the Reed music library, and the medical reading room. Whilst particularly at King's Building on the science complex, there are numerous departmental libraries. But most important to you in your first year will be the new library in George Square. Well, I think that about sums up today's discussion. However, I still have an essay question that I would like you to consider for next week. What do you understand by the term industrial revolution? Some of the more useful references which you will find in the library are on the board. And by the way, as this is your third essay, I have added the library locations. The RR prefixes indicate that the books will be found on the open stacks in the reading rooms, and paste must be obtained from the reserved stacks, as there are only one or two copies. And of course, by now, you should all have your own copies of the class set book, Court's Economic History. During your first year here in Edinburgh, you will be using the library services on many occasions. You will be set essays. You will be asked to prepare discussion papers, so that you will need access to many books other than your own set books. You may want to learn something of the history of your new home, Edinburgh. You may want to find maps, a plan and outing, or an expedition. Perhaps meet a friend. You may want to browse, or you may just want somewhere to work in peace and comfort. This means that you must learn how your library is planned, what it can offer you, and how to use it. If you pick up one of the guides from the main service desk as you go in, you will find that most of the essential information is there. And on each floor, there are prominent You Are Here direction boards. The browsing room on the ground floor is where interesting new acquisitions are placed before they go on to the stacks. And incidentally, together with the copy room, it is the only room in the library where you may talk and smoke. So let's follow Dick, and first of all, have a quick glance at the library guide. The problem of actually finding your way around can only be solved by using the library. But there are several points that you should remember. Your matriculation card entitles you to use the library. But before you can borrow any books, you must register at the library itself, at the main service desk. And when you register, you will also undertake to observe any library regulations. Readers may not take any book out of the library without first completing a loan version. All books returned after borrowing must be handed in to main service desk. Any book may be recalled when required by another reader after seven days on loan. Hey, Charlie, you know the library. Could you show me around? Okay. What about starting in the periodicals room? Next door to the browsing room is the periodicals room. Here you will find all the unbound periodicals to which the university subscribes. And it is fascinating the range of subjects and interests. It is an impossible room to escape from. Something always catches your eye, usually nothing to do with your own particular study. Well, I'm in the science faculty, a biologist. At least I hope to be. Well, let's try and find the scientific journal, the new scientist. I can show you how the system works. First of all, you must refer to the current list of periodicals. 
you will find a copy on the table near the entrance. All journals are entered alphabetically. C, L, M, N. The new scientist. And against the title there's a shelf mark. PER, periodicals. Point five, its decimal classification, which defines its place on the shelves. In EW, the first three letters of its title, giving it an alphabetical location amongst other scientific periodicals with the same class number. So, having found the journal shelf mark, look along the main passage until you see PER.5, and then down the shelves alphabetically till you come to the new scientist. It's all really very straightforward, and indeed, once you have learnt the system, particularly the classification of your own subject, you should find any journal without difficulty. The main reference room is also on the ground floor, and it is here you will find the encyclopedias, the general dictionaries, who's who, your maps, and even compendiums of quotations. Turn across two words of four letters. Of the making of books there is no end, but man is the principal actor. Of the making of books. Ah, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. Hmm. But man is the principal actor. Ecclesiastes. Man. Man. Homo. Oh, man is a principal actor. Eki Homo. Of course, as with all reference rooms, none of the books in here may be taken away on any pretext whatsoever. But you came to the library to work out essay. The reading rooms are on the first and second floors. And whilst you are free to work anywhere, it is of course more convenient to be near the books than your own subject. Subjects are displayed near the main reading room doors. And by the way, you will also find ample space there for hanging coats. If you have sports gear, or other items that you don't want to leave around, you will find lockers available in the basement. Look, you check Compton and Boss in the author catalogue, and I'll get the reserve essay book, okay? The heart of any library system is its catalogues, both author catalogues and subject catalogues, and by far the most important, at all events in your first year at university, is the author catalogue. You will find this housed in cabinets on the left-hand side of the main service desk as you come into the library. The arrangement is alphabetical, not horizontal, but in vertical blocks. The book stacks are arranged on the same principle. C-O-C-O-M, C-O-M, com. The entries within the catalogues, though alphabetical, can still be confusing. Why on earth is the Committee of, for Universities gone main here? This is because institutions themselves are often listed as authors, and journals, having no single author, may also be entered under the general title. But you are looking for a particular author. Still remember his name, Compton and Bott. And along with the author's name is the title of the book. British Industry, its changing structure and peace and war, together with its decimal classification. Point three three eight, brackets four two, com. The decimal numbering pinpoints the book on the shelves. Make a note. In fact, make it a habit to keep all references in a personal card index system. Its location may be checked on the index of shelf marks. This will be found on the ends of the catalogue shelves. Point three three eight, 
4. Add this to your own card index. Sometimes in the author catalog you will find the prefix RR followed by a subject class. This indicates that the book will be found in the reading room, Celtic section. Or you may find a note that the university has several copies distributed in the departmental libraries. The location of these libraries may be checked on the first leaf of the index to shelf marks. When you have found your reference and its location, go up to the stats. Main stat, 0.338. Placing is then numerical, not from end to end, remember, but in vertical blocks as in the catalogue. And since there will probably be several authors discussing the same subject, the final place will be determined by the first three letters of the principal author's name. C-O-C-O-N-C-O-M-COM Point three three eight brackets forty two com. The brackets forty two is a decimal classification defining anything British. If you intend to take the book out of the library so that you can work at home, sign it out in the main service desk on the ground floor. Use the white lens bits. Sorter. Your own name, title, date and signature. And make sure that your book has a current date stamp before you go, as all books will be checked out at the library entrance, staff as well as students, and even if you've got an honest face. The library provides nearly 2,000 working spaces. Sounds a lot, maybe, but at certain times, the pressures on the space is enormous. So if you just want to slip out and have a cup of coffee, don't leave your books and hope for the best. On your return, you may well find that a member of the staff has removed them. Use the time slip system. This has been introduced so that you can reserve your space for up to half an hour. If you will be away for longer, take your things with you. It's only there on others. Each reading room has a central service area, from which books on the open reading room stacks are freely available. The reserve stacks are behind counters. To obtain a reserved essay book, you must fill in a pink request form. The book can only be retained for a maximum of two hours, after which you can have the loan extended, provided, of course, that no one else has asked for it. Neither reserved books, nor books from the open stacks in the reading room may be taken away, not even to other parts of the library itself. The demand for most of the reading room books is heavy, so when you have finished with one, whether from the open stacks or from the reserved stacks, even if your time limit has not expired, don't hang on to it, but return it as soon as possible. Earlier, you were told that no books could be taken out of the reading room. There are, however, exceptions to this rigid rule, and these concern weekend and holiday periods when the library is normally closed. Between 11 a.m. and noon on Saturdays, reading room books may be removed, having filled in a blue loan slip. However, don't leave the actual filling in of your slips until the last moment, as around 12 o'clock, pressures build up fast and bottlenecks quickly form. Home borrowing. 
there will be a fine of two and six charged on any book returned after 10.30 a.m. on Monday. And in the interest of other readers, this is no idle threat. If you have a nine o'clock lecture, you can still leave your books in the social box at the main library entrance. And if you're off ill, get a friend to drop them in. Tuesday means five shillings. And Wednesday, hmm, well, in the meantime, your essays. Sources of inspiration. on the dark hills overlooking the city, it was no uncommon sight to see Hugh himself walking and meditating. An oasis, a corner just to sit and read, or a search for a subject. But if you stick to your story that you were looking for a particular subject, you had far better start at the subject catalogue. This is in the corner of the main reference room on the ground floor. Find in the index to the Dewey catalogue your subject classification. Let's see if we can find anything on evolution with reference to ethics. Ah, evolution, algebra, no, animal, no, arithmetic, no, birds, no, general biology, possibly. Point five seven five. But what's this? Evolutionary psychology, evolutionary cycles in genetics, evolutionary ethics. Point one seven. Better make a note of both those numbers, point five seven five and point one seven. But stop your search with the main subject. Evolution. General Biology, 0.575. When looking for books on a particular subject, it is essential that you should know something about the field and who are the most significant workers in it. This is so because you must come through the many entries until you find the ones that feel right. Ah, what's this? C.H. Waddington. The ethical animal. Hmm. Total. Point five seven five. Point one seven. What? Back to the index of shelf marks. Point five seven two. Point five seven two six seven nine. Ah, uh, four four. Yes, this is it. The ethical animal. This will keep me occupied tonight. But don't forget to sign it out. Fifteen minutes before closing, that is ten o'clock in term time, and twelve thirty on Saturdays, a warning bell is sounded. But if you want to work late, then there is always the study hall in College Street. Open every day till midnight. It will save time when checking out at the main door if you have your own books visible with their spines uppermost. Library books will have to be presented, and their current bit stamps checked, so don't bury them at the bottom of a briefcase. Books taken from the open reading room stacks should be replaced in their proper place. Please be careful about this for a book misplaced is virtually a book lost. Reserved books must be handed in at the reading room desk with the return half of a pink loan slip. Books which you have been using, but which you took from the main stacks, not from the reading room stacks, should be left on the orange shelves on the stack floors. Whilst those from the main stacks, which have been signed out, 
but are no longer required, should be handed in at the main service desk in the entrance hall. When you return a book, you will be given the original loan slip, and you are advised to keep this, as even the best of systems can go wrong. And in the past, it has been known for a student to be asked for a book which he has already returned. If a book which you need is already out on loan, fill in a report slip. Hand it to a member of staff, and you will be informed as soon as it is available. If you yourself are asked to return a book, please do so immediately, as all such requests are urgent. The library, as you have seen, is vast. But it is also friendly. The library is a system. The library is individual books. To get the most from the library, you must know it. And to know it, you must use it. Learn a way around the author catalogues. Remember your author's names and the titles of their books. Respect the rules which are imposed. And keep books in circulation by returning any which you are not actually using as soon as possible. The library service is there to help you, and if you are in difficulty, ask. But your independence and your responsibility help out. Thank <laughs> you.